A rupture disc is a sheet of metal or other material designed to rupture at a predetermined pressure. If this disc is to be used on a system under vacuum, that is, a system whose internal pressure is below atmospheric pressure, then there's nothing to hold it in place or prevent atmospheric pressure from pushing the disc into the system. So, we use a support device to keep the rupture disc bulging outward. The disc and support fit into a holder. which is bolted in place between two flanges. There are some discs that have a support device built onto them. This system must remain below atmospheric pressure. Whenever pressure rises above atmospheric pressure, the disc ruptures, relieving excess pressure and protecting the system from damage. This is another type of rupture disc called a rebuckling disc. It consists of a disc and a frame with a sharp knife point. A rebuckling disc is installed with the bulge extended into the system and the knife point on the outside. When pressure rises above what is normal for the system, it pushes the bulge outward. When the bulge meets the knife edge, it bursts, relieving the excess pressure. No matter what type of rupture disc is used, the principle is the same. The disc forms a weak spot in the system, saving other parts of the system from pressure damage. And if a rupture disc is placed well away from heavily traveled areas and normal work areas, it also relieves excess pressure safely, away from workers and other equipment. If a rupture disc must be used where workers normally are, it can be connected to discharge piping, which will safely carry the pressurized fluid away when the disc ruptures. Like other devices, rupture discs have both advantages and disadvantages. Among the advantages are that they're simple, lightweight, and very fast opening. In addition, they're relatively inexpensive and require no maintenance except an occasional check to be certain they're not leaking around the edges. They're also manufactured in a wide range of sizes and pressure ratings, from very small discs designed to rupture at pressures as high as 200,000 PSI to very large discs, such as the one on this turbine exhaust hood designed to rupture at only a few PSI. As a general rule, the larger the disc, the lower its pressure rating. The biggest disadvantage of ruptured discs is that when one ruptures, it has to be replaced. And to replace it, the system must be shut down. Downtime is costly. So rupture discs are usually limited to use on systems where problems with excessive pressure are very unlikely. When you do replace a rupture disc, there are certain things to be very careful of. Make sure, for example, that the replacement disc has the same pressure rating as the original. Replace a 205 PSI disc with a 590 PSI disc and the new disc won't rupture until long after excessive pressure has damaged the system. Replace a 205 PSI disc with one rated at 100 PSI, and you'll have the opposite problem. The disc will burst at normal system pressure. If the original disc required a support device, be certain to install a support device with the replacement. Because if you don't, and you forget the support, the disc is likely to collapse inward and rupture long before it's supposed to. To avoid common installation mistakes, always consult the manufacturer's instruction manual before beginning. Knowing what to do before trying to do it saves everybody time, effort, and money. We've learned what pressure is and what it can do when it gets out of hand. We've looked at the most simple type of pressure relief device, the rupture disc. We've seen that Although a rupture disc is effective, fairly inexpensive, and requires only minimal maintenance, it has one major drawback. When a disc does burst, the system usually has to be shut down to replace it. 